Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we have a good understanding, I hope we do, of the state matrix and how the state matrix is evolved through making updates every delta t to get the predicted value for the next state, now we're going to take a look at what we call the state covariance matrix and the process noise covariance matrix as well as the measurement covariance matrix. So here we're going to deal with something called a covariance matrix. It has a lot to do with standard deviation, the variance and covariance, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But first we want to get the general view of what we're trying to get to or what we're trying to understand. First of all, P here stands for what we call the state covariance matrix. What it is, it's an error in the estimate. Remember, with the state matrices, we're always estimating what the next state will be based upon some equations, based on some parameters that we can follow that are theoretical. And so we can make a prediction to the future what we think the next state will be, the state of velocity, position, acceleration, things like that. We also have to realize that the estimation process could have some errors in it, could have some noise in it, could have some uncertainties in it, and so we have to add to the what we call the state covariance matrix, we have to add what we call a process noise covariance matrix. There could be some noise in the process, even though we have theoretical equations that precisely predict what the position and velocity will be if we know the acceleration and the delta t, that may not be true in the actuality because the predicted position and velocity may be different from the actual if some other parameters came into play. There may be some noise in the input of the system. For example, there may be some wind or, or um, some things that interfere with the ability of the thing that we're tracking to follow its normal path. And for that, we have to take into account that there could be some errors in our process and we need to adjust for that. Also, notice that the process noise covariance matrix keep the state covariance matrix from becoming too small or eventually going to zero. The Kalman gain only works if we have a reasonable expectation of the error in the estimation and if that error in the estimation goes to zero because we don't properly take into account all the various things that could offset the estimation then we don't get very good results with the Kalman filter. We also have to take into account measurement, the measurement covariance matrix and what that is is the error in the measurement. Whenever we take, an, we take a measurement for position and velocity of an object that we're tracking, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the exact velocity and position. There could be some error in the way in which we try to track the object and would try to find the position and velocity of the object. Our measurement may not be perfect. We may be off due to some uh, means of our detection mechanism may not work quite that well and there will be some variation in the true value of where it actually is versus the value that we actually think it is through the measurement. So we need to take into account that there could be some errors in the measurement and we need to account for that. Finally, we then will plug that information into what we call the Kalman gain. The Kalman gain is basically a means to give a weight factor to two things a weight factor to the estimation and a weight factor to the measured value. If a measured value has very small errors, then we should put more weight in the measured value. If the measured value has large errors and consequently the estimation error that is relatively small, we should put more value into the estimation, the predicted value through the estimation process rather than the observed process through finding the actual values through measurement. So if the measurement errors are small, we want to put a lot of trust in them. If the measurement errors are large, we don't want to put a lot of trust in them. And the Kalman gain will shift that weight factor either to the measured value or to the predicted values based upon where we think the error is, the relative size of the error. If you take a look at this equation right here, and for a moment you forget what A and A transposes and H transpose and H and H transpose. These are just matrices that allow the format of one matrix to then fall into the format of the other matrix. So we'll get into what those are and in, into the details of that later. At this point, don't think that's very important. We just need to find the basic information about the ratio of the predicted value of the future, the predicted value of the future, and the measured value. Now, I sh what I should say, instead of saying the predicted value, this is really the error in the estimation. So the Kalman gain is a ratio of the error in the estimation divided by the error of the, of the estimation plus the error in the observation. If this is large, then this fraction becomes small and the Kalman gain becomes small. If this is small, then this fraction becomes large and the Kalman gain becomes large. And the information that we get from it is as follows. If the 
estimation in, if the error in the observation becomes small, if it tends to go to zero, then the ratio k goes to one, the Kalman gain goes to one, which means that the adjustment is primarily with the measured update. That makes sense. If the error is very small and tends to go to zero, we want to trust the measurement very well. We want to trust the observed values very well because we know the error is very small, so we want to put a lot of weight into the observed values and less weight in the predicted values. On the other hand, if the error in, in the observations becomes large, then we want to put less value in the observations. K will then become, if this becomes a large number, then the value for K becomes small, tends to go to zero, and that means we want to adjust primarily with the predicted state. We don't want to use very much of the observation state because we know there's a large error in the observation, and then we'll put more trust in the predicted value if those ratios become that way. And finally, if the error in the predicted value goes to zero, then the measurement updates are mostly ignored. In other words, if we think that our predicted values are really, really accurate, then we tend to ignore the observation errors. Or we should say, then we tend to ignore the observations themselves, not the errors, but the observations themselves, which is a bad thing because that is valuable information. So we want to make sure that P doesn't go close to zero. How do we prevent it from doing that? Let's go back to this equation right here. The updated value for the error in the prediction is equal to the previous error in the prediction plus Q. Q is what we call the process noise covariance matrix. In other words, if we know of a known noise in the, in the process of estimating the future, the future prediction, we know there's some error in there, we know there's some noise in there, we need to take that into account. We can't let P go to zero if there's a known process error or a known process uncertainty that we need to account for, which needs to get fed back into the process error, so in the estimation error, so to speak. And that's why we have this additional value. So we'll look at this, we'll look at this, and we'll look at this, and then we'll figure out how to calculate the predicted value of the error estimation and the predicted value for the Kalman gain. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit. I know the nomenclature of these variables can sometimes get very confusing. Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to follow. And now let's go ahead and start figuring out what a covariance matrix is in the first place and how a covariance matrix can be generated for the estimation of the state, for the estimation of the noise in the process, and for the estimation of the noise in the observations of, of course another way of saying that would be the errors in the observations we can put that in a, what we call a covariance matrix and from that we can then update the Kalman gain and update the state and that's how we do that